is Barbara, and I'm a blank builder and a blogger. I'm on a mission to rebuild and repurpose the 71-year-old aircraft construction aluminum trailer home, Ali Mo. So to get the back door open, all I had to do was just turn the knob and pull. Oh, I don't like that noise. Part of my problem here is the hinge pin is out of this part. Got a new respirator. Nibble, nibble to and fro. Who is nibbling Ali Mo?
It's important to always remember to wear your personal protective equipment. What's in this stove is rock wool insulation, acorns, and whatever else the pack rat wanted in its house. I took that photo of a pack rat in 2005 when I was tearing down the burned out well house. While evidence of them is blatant, they're actually pretty good at staying out of sight. In addition to building these massive dens where they hoard acorns, another pack rat habit that reveals their presence is a latrine. Unlike mice that just leave a trail of droppings wherever they go, pack rats go in the same place every time, notably in the northeast corner of my shed. I found a paper that confirms that pack rats' favorite food is acorns. They stock up when they're in season and ration them through spring and summer. Rats in the genus Neotoma only have four nipples and have one to four babies at a time. Here where winter is mild, they breed year round. True rats in the genus Rattus have 12 nipples and have huge litters of babies in spring and summer. Pack rats pick up treasure and take it home. Whenever I rearrange my scrap lumber pile in the shed, I wind up saying, that's where that went. I found a shed snake skin, a scotch bright pad, my work gloves, a hacksaw blade, and pencils in pack rat nests. That's why I'm careful what I leave out in the shed now they will take your tools. They don't give a rat's ass. Okay, I pulled the stove. I pulled the stove out. I just remembered I have a dolly right now, so it's a good time to move it. Let's look what's behind it. Under the stove was more this pocket nest. And back here is this tiny little water heater and that stuff all over it. I'm gonna not tell you what that is. Let's see this hole right here. I think that was where the pack rats were coming. I'm kind of paranoid because I just feel like I'm seeing movement. <laughs> this mouse lived in Alley Men. Remind me why I'm doing this again?
Scamper, scamper, little creatures. Show me all this trailer's features. bucket up under the drain pipe so any water I splash into the sink will go into the bucket uh, so I can be liberal with my water. The sinks in these are, this is done as an undermount sink so there's a little um, stainless steel basin in here. Um, and they're really quite high quality. The ones, I still have the ones from my other Spartan. There it goes. I'm getting water in my bucket. a light flange. I think I sold the glass out of this. I'm not sure if this faucet is original or not. TNF's Brass was a brand new company in 1949. You can see this faucet in the TNF's Brass catalog page from 1950. Unfortunately, the chrome on the handles is flaking off. You can get replacement handles from Home Depot, but they changed the font. It's just not the same. I wonder if this is the original for mica. This pattern is a cure for insomnia. I bet it was called tan linen. It's well worn out by the sink, though. They were stuck in the 50s without a cutting board, I guess. The kitchen window still slides open, and the screen is intact. But the glass has a couple of bullet holes. The screen must have been replaced after the window was shot.
I want to see if I can get this shelf out of here. Um, it's wet and it's gross. Um, and I'm going to take the water heater out. I can't find my big crescent wrench. I'm not sure which way to turn it. It's good plumbing in these things. It's all copper. That was my finger. I really don't want to get stuck by one of these nails, so I might put on my leather gloves. Gross, gross, gross. right here is the wheel well and it has a layer of insulation on it here it's like some kind of foam this is weird stuff I'm not sure what this is it's it's very stretchy it's like crimped paper is it some sort of corrugated it's weird, y'all. After some research, I found out this is Kimsoul. It's creped paper insulation. This brochure from 1939 is primarily to convince people to insulate at all, but it does have specs just like you'd expect. Expect? Sorry. Kimsoul has a K factor of 0.27. It's above average. That's an R value of 3.7 per inch, the same as the open cell spray foam insulation I used in my house and lab. Kimsoul was marketed specifically at trailers. I'll be interested to see where else I find it. Actually, a home insulated with one inch of Kimsoul is better protected against cold and heat than a castle with masonry walls several feet thick. Sure, but how is it against a trebuchet? Comparing Memphis to Medicine Hat is impressive. Copywriters in the 30s had a high opinion of their demographic. Imagine assuming anybody knows where Medicine Hat is. It's in Alberta. That's Canada, the big coal place north of Montana. Whereas Memphis, well, everybody knows that's the capital of Finland. Okay, this cup 
different pipe. It's going to have to come out of there before I can move this, before I can remove this cabinet. I remember breaking it off when I was working on the wheel. I'm not sure how to get it out of there. I might have to go at it from below. So there's that copper pipe. If I just pinch the end of that, I think I can push it up through the cabinet. But the underside of these wheel wells look pretty good, actually. I'm kind of impressed. These are way nicer than Alley Men's wheel wells. If I just patch the holes where the pipes go through, I can use this. So now I'm completely inside the wheel well. Uh, this is an advantage of having one of the wheels out. I forgot how strong copper pipe is. Okay. Alright, back in the wheel well. satisfying to get all these little pieces. I have to start a collection. Might as well document my plumbing. I do not know why that pipe went down through that hole. Is that the input? I don't know where it went from there. This was to the hot water. I don't know if that was the in or out. And this was out of... So this hot water... Hot. Could have been the inlet or the outlet. Actually, I'll go look at the hot water heater and then I'll know. Alright, here's the water heater. This is the way it was in the cabinet. So this one is cold and this one is hot. So the left one is cold, the right one is hot. Two and a half gallons. That's not much of a bath, is it? Okay, so here's, here's the cold. And this is hot. So this is the hot pipe going to the bathroom. And this is the cold water. Uh, I don't understand. Okay, so this is cold going to the bathroom. And this is the main cold. So this must be cold coming from the oh, hell I don't know so this is the hot to the kitchen sink right there does it make sense it says H for hot so this 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 and this are all hot this makes no sense this has to be cold the sink is just backwards. They just plumbed that sink back. I wonder if that was done wrong in the factory. Or if this was all re-plumbed later. That doesn't seem like they would something they would do in the factory. Seems like they would have figured that out. And it makes me feel like this was an input. Like this is where the water came in through the wheel well. So I, I don't know how. That's weird. I got a bright light and stuck the camera way back under the sink. Well, look at that. That TNS brass faucet is definitely not original. What is that? Four inch spacing like a bathroom faucet? I found a photo online of the original faucet. That would match that hole spacing. And it is the weirdest kitchen faucet I have ever seen. Look at it. So this was cold out of the water heater and this was hot. So this cold water came up through the wheel well and then it went into the water heater this way and then this line 
took cold to the sink in the bathroom. I'm guessing this is probably went all the way to the sink and the shower. And this line goes to the toilet. And then the hot side out of the water heater, here's the hot, and it went to the sink and shower in the bathroom. And it also probably went to the faucet. I think this used to be up here, and maybe when they put in a new water heater, they just put these back wrong. Because if you put this one up here, then that would be the correct side of the kitchen sink. That's episode four of the Beach Den Buck Rivet Report. Go buck yourself. <laughs>